Mark Spec the Comics, and I'm back. This time with a hot book alert. Haven't done one in a while, probably since uh, WandaVision. And uh, this time we're going to do two books for the hot book alert. This will be hot book alert number 19 and 20. Has to do with the Loki season one finale. If you want to see what two books are on the hot book alert, stay tuned for that intro. <laughs> If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. I just dropped a video uh, last night as well. I compared my uh, local auction house to eBay prices from uh, this past weekend's uh, auction cards, comics, and toys. And uh, if you have some time, check that out. It's a pretty cool comparison. But uh, today we got two books for Hot Book Alert. It'll be Hot Book Alert number 19 and 20. Uh, I believe the last one I did had to do with Madam Hydra, so that was pretty cool, but it's been a while. But um, watch the season finale for uh, Loki today, and wow, was I blown away. Um, I was not expecting to see what we did, and um, there's going to be some spoilers, so if you have not watched the season finale, swing by after, and you can see the hot book alerts. So I'll give you a few seconds, and then I'll start talking about the two books. All right. So if you did watch the finale, let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought. I thought it was amazing. I am excited for what the MCU brings going forward. Um, if you, you know, we saw right off the bat that they end up going in that big mysterious castle that we saw from the end of Episode 5. Which I was thinking going into it, it could only be one of two things. It was going to be Chronopolis or it was going to be Limbo Castle. Um, and either one, it was going to lead to Kang the Conqueror, one way or another. Whether or not we were going to see the character was to be, you know, foreseen until we saw the episode. I thought we were just going to get a quick little cameo of Kang the Conqueror or a version of Kang the Conqueror. But man, we saw Jonathan Majors go in there right off the bat and they started talking and I was like, wow. Um, we did see Miss Minutes talk about it in the beginning that uh, she referred to him as He Who Remains. And um, so the first book is going to be Thor issue number 245. And this is a great, great um, issue uh, written by, I want to say it was by let me get a quick little glimpse over here. I think it was Rich Buckler artwork and Len Wein uh, writing. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah, Len Wein writing and Rich Buckler artwork cover art. Um, great Thor story. And actually, I had to reread it because I, I um, hadn't read it in a while. I did pick this up as well recently. But um, it had to do with this character at the end of time. And he was a very old man, and uh, they end up, you know, having a big barrier outside of the uh, the entrance to the castle. And then Thor goes in there, has a battle, and they talk about what the scenario is with the uh, universe, the multiverse. And uh, he basically, in a last-ditch effort, ends up saving the uh, the universe and gets it gets basically rewritten. And um, they took some renderings from this storyline and adapted it into the actual season finale. And he, you know, Jonathan Major's uh, character, he talks about, I've been here for a very long time. My age is not what do I appear. And that kind of, they're taking that from the actual character and kind of blending it into, um, you know, the character from the comics, which is He Who Remains. Which I thought was pretty cool to take some of it from the actual storyline and make it their own. But um, I'm assuming that this variant that we saw of Kang the Conqueror or He Who Remains is in the comics referring to Immortus because Immortus is, you know, was granted immortality by the TVA and the TVA's actual, actual beings at the end of time as well in the comics and in the actual storyline, they don't even, you know, they just count them off as fake, you know, Kang the Conqueror was running the show over them. So, uh, 
that's a little bit of backstory on that, but um, that's why I was thinking that he was being portrayed as a Mortis, which is one of the the bad versions of Kang. But um, this book, because of that, because Miss Minutes, you know, talks about is he who remains, and then obviously Jonathan Major's character says this is one of my names that I'm I go by. I go by many names, and that's one of them. This book instantly popped. Uh, this book is going anywhere from around forty to eighty plus in the raw copy i didn't see any graded copies as well so it's just all raws so uh this is hot book alert number 19 thor issue number 245 first appearance of he who remains and there's also some talks about the um the time twisters in here as well there's a little uh cameo in there and then uh the second book this one has more to do with kang the conqueror than the first book and uh, this was a, a nice little uh, little run in the in the 260s for Avengers, and this is Avengers number 267, and this is the first team appearance of the Council of Kings, and he talks about, you know, when he's talking to Loki and Sylvie that there's going to be you have the choice of of what you want to do, and uh, you can kill me, and then. Potentially all chaos happens. The, the timeline is going to branch off and you're going to see a bunch of me, a bunch of variants coming out. So uh, they even talk about when they're sitting down that there's, you know, he's you know, shaking hands with different versions of Kangs. You know, so it's referring to the Council of Kangs. And um, this is also the first appearance of the death of the Kang variant, which I'm assuming was that variant that we saw, you know, that killed the uh, Avengers in an alternate timeline. So obviously the Avengers are not really playing any role in this uh, Loki series, but uh, refers to that. And it's also the first appearance of unknown Kangs and Kang robots. So it's, <laughs> it's a lot of Kangs. Um, this is a great book. I love the cover. The cover is done by uh, John Buscema. And um, this book is going anywhere from the 30 to... Uh, 30 to $50 range raw. I still think this book has some potential to grow. It's a great Kang cover, and any of these Kang covers are really, you know, gaining more collectability and uh, going up in value. So this is a good book to hold um, and potentially be able to find in the dollar bins. I, I was able to find a copy last week for about three bucks. Um, so they're out there. Definitely out there in these uh, later, you know, Avengers two six, you know, two hundreds, three hundreds. So definitely look in the dollar bins for this book. But uh, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's hot book alert. Uh, Avengers two two sixty seven and Thor two forty five. If you did, hit that smash, smash that like button. If you haven't already, subscribed to the channel. And until next time, Mark's with the comics. Out.